This video contains spoilers for Final Fantasy VII Remake, Crisis Core, and for Advent Children. Now, I know you're probably thinking by seeing that title, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, absolutely not, that's not true, it can't be, that's definitely not a thing. But, I just have a couple of clips here that I just want to show you and give a little bit of context to, and I feel as though it could potentially mean something, maybe it doesn't, but with the whole kind of Final Fantasy VII Remake could go in any direction now, I think it's possible for us to consider this as a potential outcome. So first of all, I'm just going to play you the first clip, which made me even think of this to begin with, and then I'll give some context. You are too weak to save anyone. Not even yourself. Are you okay? Hey, are you okay? Now, an interesting thing to take note of, the first time that we come across the Whisperers ever is when Aerith is being attacked by them. Now, usually what they are there for is to correct things when the course is starting to go off of the course of fate and she isn't doing anything wrong, she's just kind of there. And the reason why I think that they are attacking her is because she doesn't belong there, she's not the real Aerith. That's the reason why they sense that something is not right and they go after her for seemingly no reason. And then straight after this moment, she is quite literally touched by Sephiroth. And then Sephiroth goes on to tell Cloud that he can't save anybody which kind of makes me feel more and more the more that I think about this game is kind of like a sequel more than it is a remake because it's kind of like continuing on after the events of Final Fantasy 7 in an alternative universe which is kind of like the idea that I think that they're going for now so I actually like the game a lot more now that I think of it that way but basically it's kind of strange that the first time that we ever come across the Whispers is when they are attacking Aerith for no reason when they go after things which are not following the original timeline and the original story so that's just the first thing i wanted to point it point out uh, the next clip that i want to show is to do with when Aerith goes to save marlene there's a very strange moment and i want to point that out and i want to show it to you and then i want to explain my thoughts on it the thing is this place isn't safe now i'm gonna take you somewhere safer okay Are they gonna destroy the bar? Are they gonna destroy our house? <laughs> I know it's hard. Just remember, you still have your daddy. You can build a new home together, anywhere. Shall we go? Now the first thing I want to highlight is just the way that this look is on her face. It's kind of a Sephiroth look, that kind of smug smile. And then she quickly changes her expression to try and make Marlene feel a little bit more comfortable. As you can see, she kind of like widens her eyes and makes herself look more innocent. But that look is like that smug kind of Sephiroth smile. So that's the first part. The second part here is the very obvious part. So we get Marlene having a hug from Aerith to try and comfort her because she's a bit scared. Then we have the weird flash, which is the kind of like hint of Sephiroth. That's usually what it means. And it's what happens to Cloud when he's having flashback flashbacks. Um, as you can see here, Marlene kind of pulls away with like a look of horror on her face. And you could think it's because she can see that Aerith is going to die in the future. But I don't think it is that. Um, 
there's something evil about this moment and I find it I found it very disturbing and weird the first time I saw it like uh, I was saying to my girlfriend it's very strange and then Aerith does the whole kind of be quiet thing don't tell anybody like it's a secret and if you watch her brows they frown slightly and trust me every single tiny little thing that they did here was intentional you can tell like they programmed it and they made this cutscene this way even down to the ominous silence during that moment is completely silent while that's happening <laughs> So here's another slow motion clip just to show you the, f the brows changing and the expression on her face. That doesn't look like a kind expression. It's a very weird expression. It means something. And I'm not entirely sure what it means. You can leave your comments down below about what you think it means. Um, as I said, I think the two interpretations that make sense to me is that uh, Marlene like, can see that Aerith is gonna die in the future and it horrifies her or this Aerith is not the Aerith that we know. She's corrupted in some way, like she could be like one of the manifestations of Sephiroth or maybe she has an evil alternative motive or something. I'm not really sure what it could be, but if we just pay close attention to this, there's something ominous about this moment. And it's not as if the people who have made Final Fantasy VII have strayed away from involving children in kind of like a weird kind of concept before because they did that in Advent Children where they had like all of the children being kind of like, um, you know, manipulated by Kadaj and uh, Yazoo and, and whatever the, the heck the third one was called. But basically, yeah, I think it means something. Uh, the next moment I just want to bring to your attention is just basically a very small and subtle moment. Um, a couple of things happen here. Cloud says that he feels Aerith calling out to him, which is kind of strange because I'm pretty sure that doesn't happen in the original. And who else calls out to Cloud? Sephiroth. Sephiroth calls out to Cloud to get him to do things, to get him to act. So it's kind of weird that they included that line. And then also we have a small moment here, but there's an exchange between Barrett and Marlene. And Marlene kind of reflects on Aerith. And in the original, she's more kind of complimentary towards her and speaks highly of her. And I think that she even says for Cloud that he should uh, date her or something. Or he asks, she asks Cloud uh, if he likes Aerith. I think something like that happens but basically she she seems to be more connected to Aerith in the original than she is in this remake she seems kind of like not too sure about her in this remake and I feel like there's a subtle hint of that here that um, I picked up on as well so I just wanted to point that moment out she's calling out to me I can feel it you remember that nice girl who came to find you well now we have to go find her and when we bring her home, you need to say thank you, okay? Okay. That girl, she was kinda... <sighs> what? Nothing. You should help her. So yeah, a little bit of a strange reaction from Marlene there, the way that she gasps. I think that what she was going to say is that girl was kind of scary. But I think that they left it purposefully open for interpretation. But pay attention to the original, Marlene does never act that way around Aerith. She really warms to her and likes her a lot. So it's kind of strange that they went for that kind of alternative take uh, during this remake. That girl, she was kind of... <sighs> what? Nothing. And now for the final clip that I want to show you. It's just her little speech at the end. Uh, again, I said to my girlfriend when I was playing this through originally, I just found it like very strange and it was kind of out of character and it didn't make much sense. But if you consider her to be kind of like an incarnation of Sephiroth or maybe motivated by some kind of evil means, then it makes a lot more sense that she did this because for whatever reason, she knows a lot about Sephiroth. And if you watch this cutscene, kind of thinking of the interpretation that she is supporting Sephiroth and what would Sephiroth say and do to try and manipulate Cloud and the group to go forward into this, um, it makes a lot more sense, this uh, whole cutscene here. But for whatever reason, compared to the original, she knew nothing about Sephiroth yet because Cloud hadn't explained everything to her and she didn't know all of the ins and outs because she hadn't visited the 
you know, the Temple of the Ancients yet. So she hasn't got all of the information to know that Sephiroth is like evil incarnate and that he needs to be stopped. But for whatever reason, in this game, she just somehow knows everything about him and then just goes on this talk. And if you pay attention to the music, if you pay attention to her tone, the whole thing is very serious. It's kind of got like a dark tint to it as well. Like she's kind of like very militant in her stance and it kind of like everybody needs to do this and it's really out of nowhere and what i think that this is is because she has an alternative motive for wanting this done and i think that we will start to find out maybe in the next part or towards the end of this whole thing when it finally wraps up but i do think that they maybe are playing around with the idea of her being evil and there is something that she is trying to achieve but yeah we'll have to see um there is always that opportunity and that possibility that we could see the original final fantasy 7 characters come across these final fantasy 7 characters because the more that i uh, analyze this game the more that i believe that this is an alternative timeline and that we're dealing with a different situation here what will we find on the other side Freedom. Boundless, terrifying freedom. Like a great, never-ending sky. What you heard just now were the voices of the planet. Those born into this world. Who lived and who died, who returned, her howling in pain. Because of him, Sephiroth? They... their words... they don't reach him. All these moments and memories, precious and fleeting, they're like rain rolling off his back. And when they're gone, they won't cry, or shout, or anything. He'd tell you that he only cares about the planet. That he'd do everything in his power to protect and preserve it. But this isn't the way it's supposed to be. There's no greater threat to the planet than him. Sephiroth has to be stopped. He has to be, and that's why... I'm asking you to help me. I know that together we can do this. But if we do... We'll be changing more than fate itself. If we succeed, if we win, we'll be changing ourselves. Again, so considering everything I've talked to you about so far, it's quite interesting that they gave Aerith the line that we'll be changing her ourselves. She's one of the people who demonstrates the most changes in her character in this game. Like if you pay attention to lots of little things, there's a few changes here and there. Yeah, they did try to kind of stay faithful in a lot of ways, but I think there's hints of there being some kind of secondary story or some kind of secondary plot that is uh, slowly building up. But yeah, so this is basically the motivator that makes everybody go inside and then start attacking the Whispers and the giant purple Whisper Incarnate boss. And um, you got to think about it. What was their motivator for them to attack and defeat the Whispers? It was Aerith. They followed what she said. They believed in her. And not long ago, Barrett was killed. He was literally killed in the Shinra building. And the Whispers saved his life. So if anything, they should be grateful to the Whispers and they should not really feel this sense of urgency and this sense of want to stop them. Um, I know that she's saying that they need to go in to defeat Sephiroth, but they end up defeating the Whispers along the way. But maybe that's what Sephiroth wanted. It seemed as though it is what he wanted. He baited them. He opened up this portal for them and they followed him through into it, which is exactly what he wanted. And Aerith, I think, is kind of maybe being used by him 
to lure everybody, especially Cloud, because, you know, Cloud's unsure about things and, um, you know, what better way to kind of convince him than to have Aerith say it's the right thing to do. So yeah, there's, there's that. Now I just want to bring your attention back to the beginning of the game again. So, even in the beginning we'll notice a subtle change. The original Aerith walks away calmly. This Aerith sees something in the distance and then she runs away. So straight away we can see that she's different. And if you listen to how the music builds, it's got a hint of the Sephiroth theme to it. And I think that this could mean something as well. From the start of the game, most people wouldn't even notice the fact that she ran away is different. But from the very beginning, they were showing us all along that what we're, we're going to be experiencing here and what we're going to be having is a completely different story. So now the rest is just literally for us to kind of speculate and wait for them to release the full game. But that's about it. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Um, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, all of that stuff. And uh, please tell me what you think as well. If you think that I'm wrong, then feel free to tell me what you think. But that's about it for me. Uh, take care and thank you for watching. Bye.